Welcome aboard the Argonautic 40 aluminium offshore pilot. Built to Lloyd's special service craft rules, this boat is powered by Iveco engines that drive advanced water jets with precision steering from a Rolls-Royce Vector stick steering system. This one-off custom aluminium boat with her deep V hull was designed by Argonautic and was built in 2006 by Alu Marine in the Netherlands. She displaces 11 tons with a hull thickness of six millimeters, reinforced at eight millimeters around the water jets and 10 millimeters at the stern. Her twin Iveco 400 horsepower engines give her a top speed of just under 23 knots with a cruising speed of around seven knots. So if you've been following me on social media on, or on YouTube for any length of time, you'll know just how much I love rugged looking, almost commercial-esque type vessels, especially vessels that have similar lines to pilot boats. So it's gonna be a real honor to show you around this vessel. It is the only one of its kind. And best of all, it is currently listed for sale, but more about that at the end of the video. Before I show you around, please don't forget to give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, if you're looking to charter a boat of any size, anywhere in the world, with any budget, feel free to get in contact with me. You'll find all my contact details via the link in the video description and also via the link that I'll pin in the comments as well. This offshore pilot has a length overall of 11.98 meters, or roughly 39 feet and four inches, and a beam of 4.47 meters, or about 14 feet and eight inches with a shallow draft of just 0.76 meters or around two feet and six inches, she's perfectly suited for navigating tight waterways and venturing into areas that larger vessels can't reach. In terms of her accommodation, she has two cabins with a total of six berths and thanks to her air conditioning and heating system, she can be operated in both cold and warm climates. If you are a pilot boat enthusiast then prepare to be captivated. In my opinion, this vessel has all the charm and functionality you could ask for. So we've just been out on a sea trial on this boat, got some great footage, some good drone footage, which I'm sure you've probably already seen. But now let me take you around the vessel. Just board on the starboard side deck and immediately come into the cockpit. As you can probably tell, on the transom we've got a gate that can be lowered, so you have a really good connection to the water as and when you want to, uh, which I think is a really nice feature on this boat, especially if you want to spend the weekend on board hopping in and out of the water if you happen to be in an area where you're lucky enough uh, to benefit from the warm water. But anyway, let's pivot round, head forward. I'll take you along the starboard side deck. As you can see, we've got a grab rail all the way around this part of the deck. So plenty to hold on to when you're moving around the boat whilst you're underway. And as you can see, we've got the door here on the starboard side that takes you into the pilot house. And I'll take you in there in a second so we can have a look around. I'll just close that and move forward. The glass on this boat as well. Now, as you can see, it's slightly forward raking. The glass is actually one centimeter thick up here and it's also heated as well. So you probably can't tell on the camera, but there is a heating element in the glass. As you can see, a big piece of glass there with an uninterrupted view. So you get fantastic visibility around the vessel. Lots of windscreen wipers there as well. So when you are going through the rough stuff, uh, you've got good visibility still all around. And I'll show you in a minute when we go inside, but as you can see, we've got a hatch up there that slides all the way back. So you can get some really, really good ventilation going through the boat and obviously a good connection to the surroundings as well. A radar mast, as you can see, is not a radar currently fitted to the vessel at the moment. Uh, the owner was telling me earlier on, they do use it for a lot of inland cruising. So you don't really need a radar when you're navigating around the waters in this particular part of the world. Moving forward, you can see this raised section here. And what that's doing is allowing plenty of headroom in the master cabin which you'll see in a minute. Again, safety first, plenty to hold on to as we're walking around the boat and you do feel nice and secure in here as well. As you can see, a nice seating area up forward so you can sit back and enjoy the view under the hatch there, obviously. We've got everything we need in terms of deploying 
and retrieving the anchor as well. But if I sit here and just show you the view, you get a really nice elevated view on this part of the boat. Not seen that vessel before, very interesting. Very interesting. If you know the make and the model of that, let me know. Or if you've seen one before, because I certainly haven't. Feel free to send me an email if you know anything about that boat. My inbox is always open. Gonna head back towards the stern now via the port side deck. Now you will notice that the layout of the side deck on the port side is slightly different to the starboard side. Now you might be wondering what you grab onto if you are making your way down this part of the boat whilst you're underway. But if I show you under here, as you can see, you've got plenty to grab onto, which is what I was holding onto actually whilst we were underway doing our mini sea trial. So you have really good accessibility on and off the boat. You can quickly jump off and jump on when you're bringing the vessel alongside, which is really important, especially if you are operating this boat single-handedly. Right, let me take you into the living area now. This is where we find the accommodation, the entrance into the accommodation and the general setup. As you can see over here on the port side, we have a seating area and that lifts up and reveals the guest accommodation. I'm gonna take you in there in just a second. But first, let me pan over to the starboard side. And so you've got a little galley here, a TV over there on that bulkhead. And I also love the way that you've got the almost ceiling to deck windows on there. You get really, really good visibility all around the boat, which I think is a really, really nice feature. You probably can't tell at the moment because it's still quite a lot of daylight, but you've got indirect lighting all around the deck head as well. And obviously you can shut all the curtains. So if you're in here at night and you want a bit of privacy, you can shut all the curtains around this area. And of course, got a twin induction hob on there as well. And underneath this, you've got some storage there, look. So you can keep all your dry condiments in there and look, some more storage in there. And over here at the end, we've got cold storage in there, a little fridge. Great place to keep your wine and your beer ready for when you finish the hard day of motoring around. Another thing as well, when you are at sea, these cupboards can be locked. So that has a receptor, which all you have to do is put it near that and that will lock. So at the moment, obviously the green indicates that it's open, uh, but yeah, that can be locked as well. Again, another really important safety feature uh, for when you are underway. Okay, moving forward, as you can see, that's the access door out onto the starboard side deck. And look, check out this helm position. A midship, so you get a really good view all around the boat. And I love this Recaro bucket seat as well. A fantastic place to sit and take command of this really interesting vessel. Over on the port side, got some L-shaped seating, as you can see. So whilst we were underway and I was talking to the owner, I was sat here, obviously watching proceedings. But again, you get a really good view all around. And if I pan backwards, you really do see the benefit as well of that sunroof that can be opened all the way back. So over here on the port side, we have the IFCO engine control monitors. So your VHF radio over there as well. And then we've got the control for the engines and the buckets as well. As you probably already know, this vessel is controlled by twin jet drives. And I'll go into more detail in relation to those a little bit later on in the video. The boat's electric compass, depth sounder and log are all made by Mertron. And remember, if you are looking to update any of the nav or comms gear on your boat, then make sure you head to the link in the comments. Right, let's move forward take you down into the owner's cabin. Nice, decent sized double bed in here. And look, you can really see the benefit of having that raised area on the deck that gives you plenty of headroom down here. Two portholes over there on the starboard side, they can be opened up for some additional ventilation. Big mirror over there as well on that bulkhead. Give you the standard salute as you were. Another skylight there, look, so you can open up that and get some more ventilation in this particular area. Another porthole over there. If I pan around here, we have an ensuite that is actually shared with the guest cabin. And I'll take you into the guest cabin 
in just a second. And if I show you the shower there, look, nice decent sized shower with another skylight above. And by the looks of it, it's just started raining. So yeah, we were really lucky to go out and do our sea trial before the rain started. As you can see, I'm on the other side of the door that leads into the guest accommodation, but I'm not gonna go through that way. Instead, I'm gonna come back through the master cabin. Again, just show you that. The mattress on this bed can also be adjusted. So if you like to read, watch TV, or even work in bed, you can find the perfect position. And head aft. Look, we've got some more control panels over here for the various switches lighting and everything else like fuel gauges there as well own and diesel generator control there and look, more control so everything is pretty much where you need it again you know if you are a confident operator you can take this boat out on your own the visibility means that you get a good all-round view of what's going on and obviously the quick access onto the dock is a big benefit as well thanks to the way that the boat is configured but as you can see here is the guest accommodation. So it has been used as storage at the moment, but it doesn't take much imagination to see where everything goes. So we've got a bunk down there and another one over there. And look, here we have another window that gives some more light into this area. And that is the door that leads into the shared bathroom. Let's now talk about the heart of the Argonautic 40, her impressive engine and machinery setup. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, she is powered by twin Iveco N60 ENT M40 engines with just 135 hours on them. A freshwater heat exchanger cools these engines and drives the boat via a jet drive system. The Rolls-Royce Vector stick controls offer both transit and docking modes, ensuring precision in pretty much any situation. She also has a water-cooled exhaust system and features an Onan 5KW generator. She has interceptor trim tabs and an auto positioning system for stability and efficiency, plus a diesel fuel polishing system keeps the fuel clean. As well as a 900 litre or 198 gallon center fuel tank, she also has a 700 litre or 154 gallon day tank, which is under the front cabin. When motoring at her cruising speed, the boat has a range of around 350 nautical miles. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to Dvork Yacht Brokers for inviting me on this boat and of course to the owner for letting me come on and film as well. At the time of making and uploading this video to my YouTube channel, she is currently listed for sale. If you'd like to find out more, head to the link in the video description and I'll also leave a link pinned in the comments as well. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to get in contact with me You'll find all of my contact details through the link that I'll leave in the video description. And also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like, and please don't forget to subscribe. I've got some fantastic boats coming up. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the video that I made about the Vigo C10, and also check out the video that I made about the Arxon 30. You'll find a link for both videos in the video description. As always, I'd like to say a big thank you to my channel members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to become a member, simply click on the join button that you can see on my home page on YouTube. And don't forget, I do have a completely free newsletter, and in it, I often explore everything related to the world of explorer trawler and expedition yachts as well as coastal cruisers so make sure you sign up for that as well if you're interested you'll find the link pinned in the comments and also check out the link in the video description as well